Do you ever feel like you're going through life as an imposter and you're just waiting for somebody to point at you and say, you're a total fake. If you live with a mental health challenge, do you ever feel like you're not autistic enough or ADHD enough or OCD enough to fit the mold? And what mold are we even supposed to fit in in the first place? And why do we even care about fitting in that mold? Today, by popular demand, we are finally addressing imposter syndrome. What is it? Why the heck do we deal with it? Why won't it go away? And is there anything we can do to find relief from this anxiety inducing condition? We're gonna talk about all of that and more. Make sure you stick around till the end of the video. I'm gonna share some of my favorite mantras or short sayings that you can keep with you on a day-to-day -day basis to remind you that you are in fact not an imposter and actually a certifiably true beautiful representation of yourself that nobody else in the world can be except you. I've even designed a colorful PDF that you can download for free with these mantras on them. I'm going to tell you how to do that at the end of the video so make sure you stick around. Let's jump in. But first I guess I should start off as not an imposter. You're new around here. I'm Taylor with Mom on the Spectrum. I started this channel after I received my official autism diagnosis at age 31, and I realized that there were shockingly few resources for autistic adults, especially autistic females and moms, and that's why I started this channel. You can help me make these resources more available just by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. If you can take a second to do that right now, it won't even interrupt the video. Thank you so much for your support. So let's talk about imposter syndrome. Put very simply, imposter syndrome is doubting your ability and feeling like a total fraud. This can happen in any area of life, as a parent, as an employee, as a boss, as a teacher, as a daughter, you name it. But today we're focusing specifically on how imposter syndrome affects people on the spectrum. I deal with freaking imposter syndrome every single day, especially as someone who runs an autism YouTube channel. I've been very fortunate in that I would say 90, maybe even 95% of the comments that I've received are positive and supportive and encouraging, which I'm still like amazed by. Y'all are just amazing. But tangent, I also noticed this on other autism channels too, and I'm a little biased, but I do think that it's because autistic people are just kind. Like sometimes we may come across as blunt, but like, I know this is a huge generalization, but I've just noticed that the autistic community is very supportive of each other. So props to the autistic community. But there are always gonna be naysayers who I think for me many times have not been people on the spectrum, but people looking in from the outside. They say things that really mess me up, throw me for a loop, make everything super confusing and disorienting. And the sad thing is sometimes it's intentional, that sucks the most, but many times it's not intentional and people don't even realize that what they're saying is very hurtful. So that sucks for many reasons because I know many people don't wanna hurt me by the things that they say, but how much of the burden of responsibility should fall on me for enlightening other people why some things that are said are not okay. People who live with mental health issues already deal with a lot of pressure every day just to manage life and to live in a world that has been structured to mostly fit neurotypical standards. I guess that's part of why I started my channel too because I could kind of get on my soapbox here where nobody can interrupt me and I can share my insight on this. But I'm sure many of you watching can understand. Things are said like, I would never know that you were autistic. You don't even look autistic. You could have never told me and I would never have known that anything was different. All of these types of things, I think that they're said because is honestly, people don't really know how to respond to autism. There is such a misunderstanding in the media and literature, even in the medical field. There is a vast misunderstanding of how autism presents, especially in adults, especially in females. And so people are confused and they think that they can soften the blow by saying, oh, you don't even look autistic. But really that is an invalidation and it is totally upending. Is that the right word? It's like, Everything is in a blender and it makes me feel like, okay, am I overthinking this? What am I missing? Like, am I just pretending? How did I get away with not having a diagnosis before? Do I need a diagnosis? Like it just, it's not helpful. It's invalidating and it makes me question my experience. When in reality, like nobody else has gone through what I have gone through in order to get this diagnosis. Nobody else knows what it has been like behind the scenes. Nobody else knows the daily struggles, the things that I can't even put into words that are completely different than ordinary people's experiences. Not that there is such 
thing as an ordinary person. My husband is the closest that it would come to understanding this because he lives with me, but even then, he falls so short of truly understanding what I go through because autism is something that affects the brain. It does not affect our outward appearance. So when people say, you don't look autistic, that is totally and completely based on inaccurate stereotypes. Who looks autistic? And don't answer that question because it's not fair and it's a misrepresentation. There are people in every industry, in every walk of life, who are on the spectrum. We have to stop perpetuating these stereotypes that people don't look autistic. It's harmful, it's invalidating, and it's continuing the cycle of really not understanding what autism actually is. And most importantly for this video, it highly contributes to imposter syndrome for the autistic community. I have felt this so strongly as someone with lower support needs. And if you're kind of new to this type of discussion, rather than categorizing autism as level one, two, or three, where I'm at right now is I kind of like talking about it in terms of support needs. I have lower support needs than say my friend's son who is nonverbal and needs help with basic activities every day. My life looks totally different than his life, but I'm still autistic and I still have autistic challenges. I don't like to compare my experiences to other people's because I have never lived a day in anybody else's life and I don't know what their struggles are like, but I do know that I carry a significant amount of struggle and challenge every day that goes completely unseen and unnoticed by everyone, even the people closest to me. And many days, honestly, even myself, because I've masked for so long that I harm myself by not being true to myself because I'm still understanding what that truly looks like. Because the world as it's set up right now, especially for females, you're gonna get tired of hearing me say that. We're taught this way of life that involves smiling, that involves taking care of other people all the time, that involves putting ourselves last. There's so many harmful stereotypes that sometimes can be good, right? Sometimes we wanna put ourselves last and take care of other people who need help more. But as a continuous practice to live your life by, there are many harmful things that we've been taught that perpetuate masking and harmful practices, not only for the autistic community, but we're focusing on us today because it's my channel. So there's a lot of dismantling that has to happen of our preconceived notions of what it means to be on the spectrum, what it means to be autistic. And there's unfortunately, friends, a lot of work that we have to do there because like I said, even the medical community is not in agreement, not anywhere close. In agreement to what autism is, how to support it, how to provide resources for people on the spectrum. It's a shotgun blast of ideas and conflicting research. I will say one thing that I'm noticing is that once you know you're on the spectrum, the picture I'm getting right now is it's like this key and a heart and it just turns and you just feel like, yes. Which is amazing to me because there is such conflicting research but the people in the autistic community who know that they know that they know they're autistic, dude, it's just like this enlightenment. And I don't even know that there's particular words that we need to argue over in terms of defining autism. Yes, it's gonna be helpful for diagnostic purposes and I'm gonna leave that to the medical professionals, but just as a regular autistic person, I don't even care so much about defining my experience as just respecting other people who also identify with being on the spectrum. Again, I've never walked a day in anybody else's shoes and I don't know what their experience is like, but I know mine. I know that receiving an autism diagnosis has added a lot of value and a lot of understanding to my life. So how this ties into imposter syndrome, I got on my soapbox for a little bit there. It leaves us in the autistic community wondering where do I fit in? If the medical community doesn't agree on what autism is, if the people around me don't think that I'm autistic, if I've lived for this long without a diagnosis, who am I? Do I really need this label? What is it doing for me? Who am I to think that I should get any type of accommodation for this if I've passed as neurotypical for this long and the other people that I know on the spectrum have much higher support needs? So we get into this, it's almost like gaslighting ourselves where we take our needs and we think, oh, they're not that bad. I can deal with them. I can put up with them. I've gotten away with it for a long time and everybody else has thought I was fine. My friends, that is gaslighting ourselves. Your needs are legit. They are legitimate needs that deserve to be taken seriously. It doesn't matter if they're completely different than the other autistic person in your life. Your needs are important. They don't have to make sense to anybody else. You have needs and based on that fact alone, you deserve to be seen and accommodated for those needs. Now in the world we live in, accommodations aren't always possible and that's something unfortunately that we have to live with. But I think it's very important to start with the belief that your needs are worth taking care of. And the sooner you can allow yourself to recognize your own 
own needs, the sooner you can learn how to cope and manage those needs in a way that brings a lot more energy and zeal to your life. When you feel like your needs are being met, it opens up so many doors to what is possible for you. I really experienced imposter syndrome after I got my diagnosis. There were so many emotions involved. First of all, complete relief. Oh my gosh, I'm so grateful I found a professional that understood how to diagnose females. I'm so grateful that she heard my story and my experiences, gave them credibility, and gave me a term that I could use to better understand myself. But also, painstaking grief. How had I lived for this long without knowing this? I felt so misunderstood. I felt like the people in my life didn't really know who I was because I had been masking it for so long, and I still feel that way. And if you're interested more about that roller coaster of emotions, I have a video from grief to gratitude. I'm gonna post a link to that right here. That's more about my diagnosis story. But I remember feeling after I received my diagnosis, do I really deserve to have this diagnosis? Again, it's like what I said earlier, there's so many other autistic people that I've seen who live a much different life than I do. I've gone this long without the label. So it became this back and forth, not just when I got the diagnosis, but still the day. I'll have days where I question myself and again, gaslight my own needs and my own weaknesses and try to write them off as unimportant or manageable when in reality they feel completely overwhelming. This is also coupled with days where literally I will be in tears because I resonate with the autistic community so much that I almost cannot believe how long I went without knowing that I was a part of this community. Seriously, days where I'm just like in awe of how well autism describes me and the struggles that I face. So to go back and forth from this Oh, do I really deserve the term autistic to like tears of joy because I have that term and I better understand myself? It's completely exhausting. And something I didn't really plan on talking about but I think might be common in the autistic community, a lot of times we can be really empathetic contrary to harmful stereotypes. And a lot of times we pick up on what other people are thinking and feeling. People around us might not be saying these hurtful comments of you don't look autistic or do you really need that term? What difference does it make in your life? They might not be saying these things out loud but you might be picking up on that from the cues that they give. This isn't necessarily anything that you need to point out and address, but maybe just make a note of internally, hey, I think I might be thinking or feeling for this other person right now. And if they do wanna share that information with me, they can and we can have a discussion. But until then, I can focus more on my own thoughts and feelings rather than wondering what might be going on in their own brain. If you can't tell, that's what I'm currently working on in therapy right now. Let me share it with you. So yes, I felt imposter syndrome hard after my diagnosis. I know a lot of people also experience this who have not been able to get a professional medical diagnosis. They feel like total imposters because they resonate with the autistic community but don't have anything on paper that says that they belong to it. If that's you, I feel for you. I'm so sorry that you find yourself in that place right now. I know there can be so many hurdles that stand in the way of getting a diagnosis. Finances, finding someone who actually understands adult autism, location, there's so many different things and that's part of why I run my channel so that we can point to this issue and say hey we need more people to fill these roles to do these things and take care of the autistic community so I see you please comment below if you need to share some of the struggles that you're walking through because there's so many people here who will listen and offer some comfort went off on a tangent again so not only did I feel imposter syndrome when I got my diagnosis but I still feel that way today I'm also realizing that I feel that in my career which right now is in a huge transition. I'm also ADHD and something that I really appreciate, I was watching one of Purple Ella's videos the other day and she mentioned how as someone with ADHD, her special interest might be a day or a week long rather than a month long. And when she said that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. I just have these like interests that come and go, just zoom, like a race car in front of my face. I've had that happen in my career in several ways too. I've had this underlying kind of safety net of being a private flute teacher, but during that time, I also had all of these other little endeavors on the side. I had my own bakery that I ran out of the house. I had a fitness business. I was trying to write a book. I'm gonna write a book one day. All these little side hustles that come and go, and it can be really frustrating to me to look at those things and think, why haven't I been able to just stick to one thing and make it happen? There's so much to unpack there. You know, what does it even mean to make something happen but I just a lot of times feel like an imposter in terms of career because I feel like I operate very differently than many of my peers. Kind of going along with this is the fact that there are many times comorbidities associated with autism. A comorbidity is an additional medical challenge for lack of better words that can complicate issues. For example comorbidities associated with autism can be ADHD, epilepsy, OCD, post-traumatic 
stress disorder, the list goes on. But these comorbidities can make it increasingly difficult to understand yourself and the types of resources and accommodations that you might need. So not only are we dealing with stereotypes and disagreement among the medical community, but we're also dealing with comorbidities that bring extra challenges and extra information into the situation. Another Purple Ella tip, I was like binging her videos this morning, thank you Purple Ella, was stressing the importance of online communities for the autistic community because it's in places like these that you can really find your niche. You can find people that are autistic with ADHD or you can find people who also have OCD and really love collecting teacups. You know, you can find all of these really niche little communities that can help you kind of find your groove and better understand yourself. I have a video on how to join one of those communities that I can post right here. It's totally free and it's a community that I'm active in and really enjoy participating in. So if you're looking to better understand yourself, an online community might be a good place to start. Something to think about. One question that kind of enters my mind a lot is, am I autistic enough? And that's such a silly question to ask myself when I think about it. But when I was writing down some thoughts this morning, I think a very important thing for us to focus on as a community is that we are writing this story. We're actually at a very significant point in history in terms of autism because I feel like we're finally really gaining some ground especially for autistic females, in terms of how to talk about and diagnose autism. It feels like a slow process, but it's also a very important time. We have more and more YouTube channels. We have more and more entertainment that's slowly starting to reflect the autistic community in a better light. We still have some seriously problematic examples, but I do feel like this is a significant time of change and we need to be aware that we are writing this story. We can be in charge of what is said. And a lot of that comes from sharing our own stories you don't have to create a YouTube channel like I am doing because obviously that is a huge undertaking and some of you might not want to share your story this publicly. But think about your special interest. If you like to write, can you write about your story in a way that you could share it with others? You don't even have to put your experiences into words. You can create art. You can create music to tell your story and to share what it's like as a person in the autistic community. But just know that your contribution to the world matters and it is changing the game for how autism is spoken about and represented. It doesn't matter how small of a part you feel you're playing in actually creating and writing the story. Just the fact that you're in the autistic community, you're a part of this. We're doing it together. Just by breathing, by existing, you matter and the space that you take up in this world is affected by your own unique talent and strengths. So as we consider imposter syndrome, let's remind ourselves it's not up to the world to determine where or how we fit in. That's actually a very dangerous power to give to anybody else. Take back that power. Remind yourself that nobody else has lived one single second in your life. Nobody else knows what it looks like to see the world through your two eyes. Remind yourself that you are strong. You're here today. If you are here today in 2022, you are strong, okay? We have made it through some shit. And I don't normally cuss on this channel, but that's all you can say about the past two years. We have all made it through some freaking shit. And if you're here, you are strong, you are capable, and we can rewrite this narrative on what it means to be autistic. We're doing it right now. We're doing it every day. We're doing it in the comment section here. We're doing it in the online autistic communities. We're doing it through art and music and literature and you name it. By being a parent, by being an autistic parent and teaching our kids what it means to respect people who have different mental health experiences, we're changing the world. And a lot of times I think those small changes are the most important and lasting changes. Here are three simple things that we can all be doing to help combat imposter syndrome. First of all, focus on your own strengths. You've got them. If you need help figuring out what those strengths might be, you can check out this video. Number two, spend time learning from and listening to other people who you feel represent you and your experiences. You can find a lot of autistic people on YouTube. You can find a lot of autistic books. I have another video on my favorite autistic books. I'll put all these links in the description. So spending more time listening to learning from people like you. It will remind you that you're not alone and that there's actually a whole lot more people like you than you realize. And then number three, focus on your own inner experiences. So I kind of touched on this earlier in the video, but if you find yourself thinking and feeling for other people, kind of getting in other people's heads and thinking this is what they must think about me, just gently recognize that you're doing that and redirect your focus to what your own thoughts and feelings are in the situation. It might help to take a second to figure out what you're feeling in your body. If you feel any tension in your neck, shoulders, if you feel like you're scrunching your forehead or your eyes, just take note of where any tension might be in your body and what those feelings might be representing in that moment. Lastly, I told you that I would share some of my favorite mantras with you to help redirect our focus and take some of the weight off of imposter syndrome. Mantra
mantras can be used at any time during the day. It's not some magical, mystical thing, but it also is. You can just sit quietly and breathe while you say these mantras out loud or in your head. Number one, my struggles are real. Number two, I am worthy. You can fill in the blank. I am worthy of accommodations. I am worthy of a life of comfort. I am worthy of being seen. Whatever feels right to you in the moment, you are worthy. Just by breathing and living this life, you are worthy of being seen and valued and so much more. And number three, this one might feel kind of weird, but I am here. Hear me out for a second. I am here. So again, a lot of times whenever I'm spiraling, I'm either worried about something that might happen in the future or reliving something that already happened in the past. But most of the time here in this present moment, just the fact that you can sit and concentrate on this present moment usually means that you're safe. Take a breath. Remind yourself, I am here. You're in control of your breath. And if you can just keep those three words with you, I am here, while breathing deep into your belly, taking in as much air as you can, and exhaling it all out. That can make a big difference. It's the little things, I promise. It's the little things. Taking small little moments to care for yourself and remind yourself that you're here, you're worthy, your struggles are real, and nobody else has lived one single second in your shoes. So don't let anybody else make up the rules for you. As usual, had a lot more to say on that topic than I was planning whenever I hit the record button. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for watching. Keep the suggestions coming. This video was in response to one of your suggestions. I'm about to shoot another video for next week over religion and autism. I can't actually believe I'm gonna shoot it, but I'm in the mood to do it today, so we'll see what happens. If you haven't already checked out my resources page, you can go to taylorheaton.gumroad.com. I've got some free downloadable resources there, along with my 11-page meltdown survival guide, which I created to help people on the spectrum navigate meltdowns, where our nervous system kind of shuts down and we check out and just can't really do anything. A lot more info about what that is, how to manage it, how to prepare for future meltdowns. I'd love for you to check that out. It's a great way to support me and this channel. You can also support me through my PayPal account paypal.me slash mom on the spectrum even though it might not seem like it your brain is a gift together we can learn how to better understand it and care for it and live the life that we deserve to live thanks again for watching and i will see you in the next video bye